What's going on guys? This is Jeffrey again here on the channel and I'm excited to be featuring this 2023 Acura Integra. This is a, a car that was recently traded in uh, here at our uh, location, RK Auto Group, which it is available and up for sale as we speak and as of this filming. But I wanted to feature it on the channel because I figured that would be a solid choice for someone that's looking to um, basically get a fun to drive vehicle that's very fuel efficient and that has some luxury touches to it which in this video we're going to go over uh, some of the things that makes this vehicle uh, pretty cool and a fun to drive uh, choice for a lot of Americans out there. Now before we get started again I want to give a shout out to the RK Auto Group for allowing me to record this video to feature this amazing car that we just traded in over here. Um, if you guys have been finding value in the videos that you guys have been checking out from our channel it would be very nice for you guys to like and subscribe uh, for the channel is starting and growing and I really do appreciate all the support that you guys have been giving us over the past year. Uh, more videos like this will be coming and I'm looking to do a 0 to 60 test with the draggy that I just purchased uh, For me to be doing 0 to 60 tests uh, Probably not as of this uh, filming, but maybe tomorrow if we can get a chance to take it out on the road and maybe uh, Try that out make sure to uh, put it right on on the video there But so that way not to take up any more of you guys time. I wanted to give you uh, an overview of what the features and things that this car has to offer as you guys can tell, this is not an A-Spec, nor a Type S. Uh, this is basically a uh, base model Integra, but it does come with a lot of features uh, for being a standard one. And speaking of the sporty uh, driving feel, this car does come with uh, some 17-inch rims wrapped in 215 uh, Continental Pro Contact tires, which they are an uh, all-season uh, solid choice for those that are living in... Uh, very mild snowy condition area this vehicle as it sits it is a front wheel drive i don't even think this car comes as an all-wheel drive version um in essence it is a civic uh with a tux <laughs> um, but as you can see it does have a nice uh sport back design which is very uh standard in a lot of the vehicles a lot of the manufacturers are basically switching to a more um sport back design for their cars which kind of gives you a bit of a hatchback look in a way and i must say this third quarter panel view uh, of the vehicle does look pretty solid and nice as you can see no fake exhaust like other acuras that you typically find they actually uh, decided to give you two dual outlet exhaust which is pretty cool um, and then a nice little uh kind of like a little uh, spoiler built into the um trunk release area as you can see but this vehicle like i mentioned it is very fuel efficient rated at at 30 miles to the city and 37 on the highway and this vehicle for a lot of you uh honda guys that may possibly know this um it does have the same engine as the civic si um which in essence it is the same civic si and the civic type r except that uh on the type s the wick has been turned up a little bit more than what the type r does have to offer but let me uh, go ahead and open up the hood area for you guys so that you can see what's powering underneath the hood. So for starter guys, I'm going to go ahead and show you the key fob. As you can see, I do like the design. It definitely, you can differentiate it from a Honda key, for instance. But as you can see, I noticed that there's no remote start built into this key fob, which I find it very odd considering that, you know, basically all the Hondas come with remote start. But... As you can see, there's no button or anything like that. If you want to unlock the car, you have to just put your hand through the handle or just touch this pad over here to unlock it. But we're going to go ahead and um, pop the hood area, like I mentioned, so that way you guys can see. And what's powering underneath the hood is a 1.5 turbocharged four-cylinder engine with VTEC. This engine is rated for 200 horsepower and like I mentioned 30 miles to the gallon, 37 on the highway. Um, it does have a top speed of 135 miles an hour which is, let's be honest, there's, you know, that's plenty of power for a lot of consumers out there which is, you know, pretty good. It's not like you're going to find a road where you can hit top speed on this vehicle anyway but it's something that definitely uh, gives it a nice sporty feel especially when you get on it once that turbo kicks in um, but it is rated for a good decent amount uh, of mpg 
And Acura makes it very easy for you to service all your vehicles, or I should say Honda, since it's literally the same engine. Um, they'll, that means that you'll spend a lot less time, you know, uh, servicing your vehicle. Um, you basically have a shortcut to every compartment in the engine. And given that it is a very, fairly small engine, you do have a lot of space right uh, behind the firewall there. I mean, in front of the, the firewall, I should say. And even in between the engine and the front of the, co the car, like where the radiator would be can kind of see uh, a little gap there but all in all it's a very uh, you know they do have a lot of things that you can service very easily which means less of a shop bill for you when you do come in and service your car now to keep talking about the exterior design as you can see this car gets Acura signature uh, jewel eyed headlights with uh, which they are full LEDs with LED daytime running lights LED low and high beams and you have a functional air vent right in there for aerodynamics and as you can see you do have that diamond uh pentagon grill that they are implementing on other cars now if you guys follow me on the interior this car comes equipped with a fair good amount of tech features as you can see you do get one touch up down for both driver and passenger um, i want to say that this vehicle comes with a eight-way power adjustment on the driver's side a tilt and telescoping steering wheel and one thing that I noticed that's pretty cool is the fact that you have a 10 inch screen right in front of you, which it is a full LCD screen, which um, depending on the mode that you select it kind of does like a little uh, switch up on the uh, screen cluster view right there. I did notice though that on the head unit over here, it tends to be a little small for my taste, even for the standard uh, screen. Basically, other manufacturers are switching to a 10 and a quarter inch and even 12.3 inches. And I'm surprised that Acura fitted this vehicle with like, I want to say a seven and a half or maybe eight inch screen right over here. And basically, as you can see, the interior is going to look almost similar to that of a Honda Civic, considering that it is built off of the same car, except that some things, some touches are going to be slightly different. But let's say that we wanted to do a mode selector or switch the um, driving mode. All you have to do is press up where it says dynamic and then the car is going to give you a sport look along with a uh, normal look and then you have a comfort look which typically most people are going to drive in between comfort and normal um, me personally i'd probably be in sport mode most of the time just so i can get the performance out of the engine but one thing that i do like about the center over here is not only do you have um, a uh, three level heated seats for both driver and passenger um, it does have a nice satisfying click when you turn up the uh, fan speed. No dual zone climate control I notice over here, which I find that odd for a luxury vehicle. I understand the type of class that this vehicle fits in, but again, I feel like for being a luxury brand, Acura, that it should definitely should have thrown in, even as a standard um, feature, um, dual zone climate control. I mean, you can get dual zone climate control basically on a Forte, uh, depending on the equipment, of course, but um, again, even the next trim up will basically give you dual zone climate controls and, you know, uh, sunroof and things like that, which speaking of, this one also has, surprise is not a full panoramic sunroof, but it is a standard sunroof. You do get LEDs in the interior, which adds to the premium of quality right there. And the sound system is pretty decent for not being the upgraded ELS uh, 16 speaker, speaker sound system that you typically find in this car. Um, it's actually, I want to say, 9 to 10 speakers throughout the cabin, which, again, it does the job. It does sound pretty good uh, for those that are looking to save some money and, and basically drive uh, in a bit luxurious uh, vehicle there. I'm surprised to see that the car does have automatic start stop considering the class of vehicle that it is. I mean, a car like this that's rated for almost 40 miles per gallon kind of doesn't need that feature, but I guess it is nice that they uh, throw that in there as well. If we put the car in reverse, this screen is also gonna look familiar to a lot of uh, Honda users. And as you can see, it does give you the trajectory and distance marker where the vehicle is going. And the car also has multi angles. Now, if you wanted to change it to a wider view, you can tap that and now you can see basically a, a whole uh, wider peripheral view or a drop down view in case you wanted to park very close to a wall and you wanted to see how precisely far back you can go. This button over here would be reserved for your rear cross traffic, which highly suggest for you to leave that on. That way um, you stay alerted whenever you're backing up so it can detect the motion and movement behind there. And I noticed that this vehicle um, 
doesn't come with wireless Apple CarPlay or Android Auto unless you step up to either an A spec or possibly the um, a spec with like a uh, special package that you can get but it, you still get it nonetheless all you have to do is just plug it right there where that USB icon is um, and I noticed that the vehicle doesn't even have a wireless charging pad which is pretty interesting that it did that it didn't come with this um, but you do have a 12 volt along with that USB right there um, the leather does feel pretty nice uh, on the bolstrings and the seat and all that which the seats look pretty decent um design wise and these vents they do have like a satisfying click to them also which is pretty cool and i do like the design of how they're integrated onto the uh dash right there which is nice now like i mentioned the car does have um automatic high beam assist which as you can see they're already turned on right there on the side and engine sounds it sounds okay i mean it is a one point 1.6 liter uh, turbocharged engine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you uh, an exhaust sound so that way you guys can hear what that is. I'm gonna do like a, a startup and uh, give it some reps for you. And after hearing what that uh, 1.5 turbo 4 sounds like, we're going to go ahead and bring this to a close. going to go ahead and sit back here to give you guys a illustration of, let's see if we can get this car to unlock. We're going to sit back here so that way you guys can get an illustra illustration of what space is like back here. And as you can see out of the gate, uh, the car does look to be a little cramped, of course. Expect nothing less considering the class of vehicle that this car falls in. But even still in my current sitting position, you're still looking at about inch and a half of knee space, which is plenty of space for me to maneuver. I do notice that my hair is touching the roof back here. Again, it is very uh, slopey back, but um, nonetheless, a comfortable place to be in. Uh, no vents back here, which I kind of don't mind the fact that they don't have them, but again, given that it's an Acura, I feel like that should be something that should be thrown in there. But I'm not going to criticize it too much for the vehicle is, uh, you know, it's not like we're talking about TLX or anything bigger than that. But just to wrap things up, guys, we're going to go ahead and bring this to a close. Like I mentioned, the car is available as of this filming. I want to thank you guys for your time, for allowing me to uh, do this overview for you guys, and I hope you find value. This car is available as of this filming, like I mentioned. And don't forget to subscribe, hit like, and I will be doing that 0-60 to test uh, right now.